Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Reality Kingdom, where we talk all things reality TV or whatever. My name is Sparrow. I'm your host for today, and I'm here with our wonderful, wonderful um, co-host, Lee. Lee, how you doing? <sighs> I'm doing pretty bad. This is a pretty, pretty terrible week. For all of my faves, I know uh, my fellow summer stands can relate. So, <sighs> what's interesting is we started off this week happy, Mr. Yeah. Kyle. Kyle um is out. Ding dong, the witch is there. Ah, so he's gone. Um, and everyone's happy. Yay, we finally got him out. He had to go. He was doing the most. He was doing this, that, and the third. Um, we get into the HOH competition, and Jess. Um, is the HOH. It's kind of like, hmm, what's Jess going to do? We don't really know. You know, Jess is kind of, I don't know. We don't really know what Jess is going to do. Ciao. What, Jess? <sighs> so, at the end of last week, we did see Gino um, kind of hinting that, uh, well, really, Kevin um, and Gino kind of hinting that they wanted to, I don't know, form something with Jess and they they started a, a, a leisure formation of an alliance um with Jess, JC Lynn, Gino, Marty, Kevin, and then maybe Helena. Um so Jess wins this HOH and basically Jess um is like, well, I guess I'm working with these people who came to me last week and just nominated me. So Jess decided that um <laughs> like I'm not gonna I'm gonna shave them a little bit, but it's not it's not horrible. We'll get into it. So Jess decides. I think Jess what Jess did after they won the say choice was made a decision. And their decision was to align themselves more with more so with Gino, JC Lynn, Kevin, and Helena than everybody else in the house. Um so at the beginning of the week, Jess is like, okay, I want to target either Herman or Moose. Either Herman or Moose gotta go. Uh, if I have to renom somebody, I guess I'm gonna have to nom T, which is which is not Jess's preference because Anisha is a part of Jess's siblings alliance, which to Jess is fake, but you know, Jess doesn't want them to know that. So Jess wants her monomoose to be nommed and the veto to not be used, and then they can be Gucci. So what happens is um what happens is a lot, but basically, <laughs> no, because it's a lot, but basically. When Jess decided that they were going to nominate them, um, Jess had a lot of conversations with them and was kind of like, I, I don't know, trying to pry out information, I guess I can say. Jess has been acting very pry with that, the side of the house that they don't think they're on. So <laughs> they nom Herman and Moose. And um, when they nom Herman and Moose, Herman does a little jig. <laughs> and when he does his little jig, apparently Jess feels like that's offensive. Jess doesn't like that. Jess has been saying a lot of like, I don't know, weird comments, um, especially after the nomination. She, they then have a talk with Moose and they have a talk with her mom and they're not liking the response. And before the nominations, they was like, why are you not mad that I'm nominating you? And Jess just has had a lot of feelings. I don't know, Lee, how do you feel about how Jess has been approaching, how Jess was approaching you know, that's part of their HOA. I just think Jess is annoying. <laughs> um, it's very clear that Jess in real life um, was never a part of the quotations part of the group, never felt like they had any real power. And it's very obvious that they wanted to use this HOA to try to get back at those bullies that picked on them when they were in high school. And it's honestly just not a cute look. Um, the fact that they were shook because Moose and Herman reacted to them putting them on the block. Um, baby, just because your HOA does not mean I have to respect you. Just because you're putting me up doesn't mean I have to smile in your face and give you everything you want. It's just, it, it was just really weird how they ran this HOA. They even said in the episode themselves, like, I don't think I'm handling this well. You're not. You're really not. Um, they, they, in my opinion, set Moose up, and then they tried to set up Herman later on, and it didn't work. And they were upset that it didn't work, and they were upset that they were upset for being not. It was just weird. It's like, it's like they thought, oh, 
I'm gonna get HOH, I'm gonna nominate the cool kids, and they're gonna they're gonna bow down. I get to see them finally get to be at fear, and neither one of them cared. And they were like, Why don't they care? Am I not doing this right? Like, babe, like I just I just can't. I just can't. So Jess nominates Herman and Moose. Um and Jess doesn't want the veto to be won or used, but her mom wants the veto. Mm -hmm. He jigs his way off the block. <laughs> um, and before we get to the place from nominee, Jess has been very conflicted um, about the replacement nominee after her mom won the veto because Jess didn't really have a plan that they were most comfortable with. Jess was, has been saying that the replacement nominee was going to be T. But it seemed like Jess really didn't want to do that because Jess knew that a lot of people were going to be mad. So, mind you, Jess is in alliance with Tanisha, Summer, and Betty called the siblings. Um, they had been talking about bringing Josh into this alliance already. So Jess is talking to them as if that alliance is still a thing after her mom has won the veto and after they know they're going to have to renominate one of them. And so basically Jess kind of approaches it as like, oh, yeah, by the way, I kind of need a pawn. So, you know. What did y'all, what y'all think? And the siblings, all three of them, was basically like, girl. So Gino's right there. Gino just nominated. You had pawns. They're walking around. Hello. Um, and Jess is like, no, I mean, but I need like a, you know, a black pawn. And <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. But Jess was like, no, I, you know, I would rather, you know, what about one of y'all? Because y'all would, you know, y'all would stay. And then basically Summer and Betty, it was, was like, and Tynese was like, what? I thought we was in alliance, girl. So, ooh, this has been a long week. So basically they're asking um, Tynesha and them to kind of offer to be a pawn so that they don't have any blood on their hands. This is what people tend to do sometimes, but I don't think this strategy is ever a good strategy, girl. You should have you should have figured that out at a different time. I don't know. Or be a bold bitch. But basically, Summer and Tanisha's response was kind of like, and Betty's was kind of like, girl, if if we're in alliance, um, and you ain't got your baby and your grandmama got your baby. No, I'm just saying, if we're in an alliance, like, why would you ever nominate us? So they started throwing out names. They're like, Gino's there, Marty's there, Helena's there. Ooh. Kevin is there. So Jess now is like, Ooh, you said Helena's there. And you said Kevin's there. So now Jess is going to go tell Helena and Kevin like, oh, by the way, this is going on. Da, 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 da. Keep in mind, throughout this entire HOH reign, Kevin has been doing a lot of check-ins with Jess, kind of making sure Jess is doing what he what he wants him them to do, basically. He's like, well, oh, are you telling them this? Are you doing this with this? So Kevin is doing a lot of work when it comes to Jess's HOH. Lee, how you feeling? I'm just going through the stuff. Um, about like Kevin specifically, or just like Kevin, and then also the just trying to get Tanisha and them to offer that whole situation. I feel like that was a whole different situation. And I Lee, mean, it's just like 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 you said, like Jess was just clearly very unprepared. Um, they they kind of went into this week with the narrative that um the specific you know the five black house guests plus uh Moose were a solidified six and that they were obviously a group and they were shutting out Helena, Jess, Kevin, Gino, Jason, and Marty. That's kind of, and that's kind of from information that Kyle started back in his week when he thought, when he basically pushed every Black House guest out of his uh, alliance that he was in and created his own little white bubble. Um, basically, I feel like the whole the black people are working together thing has been brewing since then and it kind of just reached its peak this week because Jess started feeling like they are going to prioritize themselves over me which was not necessarily true but they felt it um in general like i have some words for kevin as well but i do want to say that for a rating because i feel like i gotta get more in detail with him mm -hmm. but uh like i said overall this i mean just just handled this week terribly they're almost definitely going to be a target next week yeah so moving along, um, Jess then um, is going to have like a conversation with Summer. I feel like that's kind of important. Basically, Summer is doing a lot of pushing to get anybody but Tanisha nominated because Tanisha is in that alliance with them. So Summer has a really long conversation, basically pushing that. Um, and it doesn't work, but 
um, from what we know from the feeds, it seems like it might have because apparently like the night before the nomination ceremony, Jess was almost going to put up Helena and that was who Summer was kind of pushing. And Marty had to have a conversation with Jess and basically, allegedly, we don't know this, but Marty allegedly had to have a three hour conversation with Jess to m- ensure Jess was still going to put up Tanisha. So we get to the renom ceremony, Jess nominates Tanisha and the final nominees are Tanisha and Moose. So basically, Kevin and the white crew are deciding that we all need to vote out Tanisha instead of Moose and that we're going to make it a five to four vote and that we're only going to tell Josh and we're not going to tell the other three. And that's kind of how they're looking. Kevin already had a conversation with Josh. What's Kevin? Already had a conversation with Josh and was basically like, look, how you feel about us voting out Tanisha? So Josh is aware of the plan. He knows that it's going to be a five to four vote and Josh is going to go ahead and vote the wrong way. And so that him and Kevin can have something going on, but we can get more into that, into the rating. So it's looking like Tanisha is probably going to end up going home this week. It doesn't look like there has been any, you know, I feel like Josh would be the person who could maybe flip this. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem like he's done that. Yeah, basically, I mean, it's basically going in that direction at this point and there's no stopping it. For some reason, they see Tanisha as this, um, person that connects that side of the house, basically the leader. Um, in my opinion, Tanisha hasn't really shown to be any of those things, but that's what they believe. So, I mean, hey, mm-hmm. basically, I just, you know, this is, this is just a precursor before we get into the ratings. <laughs> I'm going to be dragging a lot of people tonight. Please. Helena and Jess are at the top of that list, but I just feel like a lot of dumb and unreasonable moves are being made this week. And this is my time to go off about it. Yes. So what usually we would do is we would, um, what usually we would do, and we haven't done any other podcast this season, is kind of set up how the house is standing. Because the house hasn't stood any anywhere. So I'm just going to do that before we get into the ratings. For you to understand, um, Jess, Kevin, Helena, Gino, JC Lynn and Marty have a the not, White House guest have a not solidified alliance. It is a very clear side that is working together and they're all pretty much on board. The only person who's kind of hesitating is Helena because I think Helena just doesn't want to play that way. But Helena is still more on that side than any other side. Um, so that's them six together. On the other side of things, there is Summer, Tanisha, and Betty who are together. Um, And then there is Herman, who isn't necessarily with them. And then there is Moose, who isn't necessarily with them either. So it's not like that's a formed group on that other side. It's like an an unformed group on the other side. Who am I missing? Because I feel like I only named three. Oh, Josh. Josh. Josh is in the middle. Josh is trying to play the middle. But that other side, like I said, is a clear side. And on this other side, that Josh is a little bit more, I feel like, inclined to be considered is not there. But Josh is kind of in the middle as most much as anybody could be. So basically, that's the setup. Herman is trying to make a anti-floaters alliance with Gino and Tanisha and them, but that's not going to go anywhere. So that doesn't really matter. So that's the setup of the house. It's a unformed side, and then it's a formed white side and an unformed black side. That's how we're looking. So we can that's literally it. what it is. Like, I mean, you can try to say it's anything different, but that's literally what it is. That's literally what it is. Every black house guest is not included in the form side. They're included not in it. That's it. Let's get to the ratings. Not much else to say. Say what you want to say. So. Um, so. First, we're going to talk about Kyle. Kyle has been evicted from the house. We are going to very quickly talk about what Kyle is as an overall player. Lee, what is Kyle as an overall player? Girl, I forgot who Kyle was. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely going to keep him to 0. 0.5, um, mainly because a lot of the prejudice that he brought into the house is obviously still ruining all of my faves game. So call it bias. I do not care. He is a 0.5 from me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give Kyle a one. <laughs> and 
And that's because I don't like them. Sure. We speak our biases over here. We don't like that man. And we'll never. And we will never. Anyways. Let's talk about Betty. Child first. Hold on. Let's not get into the gradings. Oh, it's looking bad. For the girls. For the girls. This is just... I don't even want to do this. Oh, it's my God. So like, so my heart is actually sad. I'm actually getting sad right now. I'm actually getting sad right now. So. So. Betty. So I've been supporting my sister. I've been giving her that five that she definitely deserves. But I do feel like it is time to start bringing the girls down. Um, mm -hmm. Essentially, the way the house is splitting, it is essentially that five that that was that six that was named J C Lynn, Gino, Kevin, Summer, Helena, Marty. They are all adamantly specifically going after Herman, Moose, Summer, Tanisha. Um, and Betty is just added on to that because she's black. Let's just be honest. And because they forced that side together, they weren't actually working together, the black house guests aren't actually working together. So they don't actually have a power structure. They don't actually have a named alliance or a formed group or any real you know, plans move forward because they're not an actual alliance. They were pushed together by implicit bias with the other White House guests. Now, I just, you know, had to preface that mm -hmm. for giving her a score. Um, Betty, unfortunately, I'm going to have to bring down to a four. Um, she is now in the essentially official minority because they're not able to get a group form. She does not have her mind's loyalty moving forward necessarily. She doesn't have Moose 100% loyalty moving forward. She has Josh, but Josh is so busy laughing and kicking everybody else. He's not really worried about her too much. If Tanisha goes this week, which is very much likely it's just going to be her and Summer against the world. If one of them don't win HOH, they're screwed. Um, it's a very unfortunate situation that Betty's put it into. Uh, I, I do... There is promise for Betty. Like I said, if the next HOHs can go on the on if, if Summer and Tanisha, it's not Tanisha, because she's gonna be out. If Summer and <laughs> Betty and Herman and them can win the next few HOHs, she'll be good. You have a few players in the middle, like Kevin and Helena, who aren't necessarily just gonna vote with that side every single time, but it's just as of right now, they are starting to fully put in place the split in the house. And she is on a side where not only do they not have the numbers, they don't have the competition wins, and they don't even have the loyalty. So I have to give her a four. Yeah, I got to give Betty a three because I feel like all of the things Lee said are correct. But also on top of that, I just don't think Betty is capable of getting out of this sticky situation if they have to, if she has to like strategy, strategize her way out. I feel like even though it seems like maybe Moose will be targeted after or her mom will be targeted, um, if one went veto and Betty end up on the block, it's like, oop, or if somebody who doesn't want to target her mom wins HOH, or if somebody who has a deal with Moose wins HOH, Betty could low-key go at this double that's coming up. Betty could end up out. And it's just because Betty doesn't have that many connections at all. Like, even if Summer and Betty are nommed and it's a double, it's kind of like, well, uh, not too much time to talk about it. We're just going to vote who I'm friends with. And people are gonna, probably going to vote out Betty instead. If they can't talk about who they voted out, like if they talk about it, it could be Summer. But if it's a double, it's a double. So without that, mm, it's looking bad for Betty, basically. And I just don't see Betty thinking, hmm, they probably think all of the black people are working together. Let me try to do something about that. Betty's yeah. not thinking that because that's not true. Yeah. None of them are thinking that because it's not true. So they would have to literally dig deep in their asshole, think about the fact that maybe everybody else might think that randomly they're all working with each other, even though Summer told her mom that she doesn't want to use veto on him, and they were ready to vote out Moose, even if uh, another person's going to be nom. And, like, I don't know. And they're voting out Moose now. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. So it's looking bad. It's a three. Um, It's annoying. Gino. 
Um, Gino's not doing anything. Gino wasn't doing anything before his HOH. When he won his HOH, he let Summer run it. And when he's not HOH, he's not doing anything again. Again, Gino is only good with Jess because Jess is racist. Like, let me not say that. Jess is not racist. But Gino is only good with Jess because Jess had a racial bias and assumed that all the black people were working together. And it's really stuck on that. And so Jess feels like they have to work with Gino. Gino has put in no work. For Jess. Gina has put in no work and no effort. They had one conversation fact, with Jess. Other than that one conversation. Other than the fact that Gino had that one conversation with Jess as Jess was on the block and Gino was ready to let them go home. Other than that, Gino has put in no work. JC Lynn put in a little work for him, a little bit, but JC Lynn barely did anything. It is. She just has a good relationship with Jess. So I just don't think Gino is in a better position. Because Gino is now not the person who's targeting this fake alliance. Um, it's Jess. Gino um, has fake deals with some people on the other side. But other than that, what is Gino really doing? I don't know. So with that being said, I'm just going to have to give Gino a four. Four fully on positioning. Which ain't even that good. Because if the wrong person went HOH or if the wrong person went veto, I mean, Gino could easily be gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and honestly, I have to agree with a lot you said. I mean, it, it comes down to the fact that, you know, at the beginning we thought, you know, Gino might be a, a power player in this game. He's in a lot of situations. He's getting a lot of information. We have to just see, like, okay, how can he handle that? Is he going to be an active enough player to do anything with that? He showed the Kyle week that he's not able to do that. He showed his own OHOH week that he really isn't the best strategically. Um, a lot of us could agree that the move of getting out Kyle was probably not the best. However, because of the fluidity of this house, the move ended up working out for the better. Um, essentially, in this split house, um, he isn't necessarily being targeted. I do think Jason Lynn will go over him. Helena will probably go over him. Kevin likely goes over him. Marty likely goes over him. Jess likely goes over him. A lot of people are not going to want to specifically target him, especially after this week when the vote goes down. I mean, you have Alina actively flipping. You have Kevin actively flipping. Just put up Tanisha her damn self. I don't see anyone wanting to go after Gino. In fact, you have people like Moose that wants to work with Gino. Tanisha wants to work with G Gino. Her mom desperately wants to work with Gino. Gino also has Jason Lynn, an ally who is never going to turn on him. Not anyone else has that in the game necessarily. So sadly, mm -hmm. Because of no work of his own, Gino right. has been put into a pretty good position. So I'm going to give him a five based on position alone. I don't think he's earned think to be in that position. But we're now looking at a point where it's what? 12 people in the house. going to be 11. We're about to be in Jerry damn near. And nobody's really looking at him. People want to work with him desperately mm -hmm. for some reason. And if they don't want to work with him, they definitely want Jason Lynn to go before him. Now, things could change after this vote, but I don't really see them doing so because mm -hmm. either they're going to think they can work with Gino or other targets are just going to be in front of him. Because the benefit of doing nothing means no one wants to target you because you're doing literally nothing. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, a five alone, sadly, he could probably win this game. That would just be the darkest timeline if he does. <laughs> but <sighs> it's gonna be a lot of dragon. <laughs> this is gonna be a lot of drag. This is an interesting one. Lee, you mentioned before this started <sighs> that some people was gonna get some heat. Let me adjust. Um <laughs> how you feel about Helena? I just think Helena's gameplay is just, I will never respect it in my entire life. The rat floater game, it, it's just, it's really just not to be respected. But the thing about Helena, the way she plays it, like Kevin, you can respect it just a bit, but the way Helena plays it is just so weird. Like the girl, it's like she just spills information for no reason. There's no real strategy behind the information she's just spilling. She's just spilling it. And it, it, it's just so weird to see her in these conversations. I do think it's very obvious that Kevin is the brains behind whatever operation that the middle people are running. Um, Helena is just going to flip-flop on every fucking vote moving forward, apparently, because she is in everybody's alliances. Personally, I just... Now, and I, you know what? I'll get into it. Taking bias out of it, because 100% I am pressed that she's going after uh, Tanisha Summer and Betty. But taking bias out of it, it is not smart for her game to do that. If she chooses a side, actively, Summer and Betty 
most likely her mom and Moose, who have no connection with you, are now going to be coming after you. You've been lying to these people's faces saying, you want the people of color to go far. Been telling the men, Demolines, I want the women of color to go far. And 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 all of a sudden, you want to take out Tadisha over Moose, who you do not have any relationship with at all? It just really doesn't make any sense. I mean... You can argue, oh, well, they did pitch her name. They pitched her name after Jess told them that basically only the man Dim are available. That, and then she only asked Summer and Tanisha. Betty didn't pitch Helena's name. Summer and Tanisha did, but Summer and Tanisha only did after, like I said, she basically said only the man Dim were able to go up. So I just feel like Helena's really making a bad mistake this week. Um the best part about her game was that she was playing the middle anonymously. She's not going to be able to do that after this week. I mean, I really just want to give her like a two based on hatred alone. Sadly, she's not paying at that level, so I cannot give her that. I do think she is still one of the safest people in the house. Um, do I think she can win this game? Not necessarily. I do think after this week, because she plays such a passive game, that once they see her flip on them, they're going to be absolutely done with her. And I do think Herman, Moose, and Summer will have no issue targeting her. So I, I think this is a very bad mistake. I'm not going to go too low on Helena, but I am going to bring her back down to a six. All righty. Um, I agree Um, with a lot. I do feel like that it's kind of, Helena kind of doesn't have much of a choice because if Helena doesn't vote with that way, they're going to be kind of like, why you didn't vote that way? Um, so I feel like it's it's a little bit a sticky situation for Helena. But it's but not I really a sticky situation because just, uh, I feel like a good player mm -hmm. realizes that my game is exposed if Helena goes home. I need to make sure that Moose goes, which she has the influence to do. She's just choosing not to. She's doing what Kevin wants. Let's just be 100% honest. I agree. I feel like she's in a sticky situation because she's the type of player she is because she's passive. So because she plays the game that she plays, um, she's gotten herself in a sticky situation um, because she doesn't want to do anything about it. It would be better, like Lee just said, that if Helena took some gumption in this game and decided to persuade other people to do what's better for her game because it's not good for Helena's game for Tanisha to go. Tanisha is a number for Helena that a lot of people don't have. A lot of people don't have Tanisha. A lot of people do not have Tanisha. And Helena could have Tanisha. What, Tan uh, what Helena is doing is, I guess, allowing Kevin to have the one up with her in that duo that they have. Like Now, it's kind of like Helena's piece can stay or Kevin's pieces can stay. And Helena's like, well, I guess Kevin's pieces can stay, and I'll just try to. She's losing a grasp. She's using. Mm -hmm. She's losing a grip that she had the, when, the, when there wasn't sides. It was good for her game when there wasn't sides. Now there's sides. Would you? Mm -hmm. know? But that's the thing. It's like at least Kevin was like, okay, we're keeping Moose and Victor Tanisha. Well, let me go make a relationship with Moose. He's been talking to Moose every since. Right. Helena, why the fuck are you turning on your alliance? Your the alliance that. One of the only alliances that you were in, let's just be 100% honest, mm -hmm. for Moose, and you're not even talking to him. Moose doesn't even know that you're saving him. Mm -hmm. It's like, where is the logic in, in, in the gameplay? And it's like, this, I'm going to say this about Helena, and this is why I can't respect her, I feel like, on a personal level. Because one, first of all, and I'm going to say this, don't go into Tanisha's face and say, I want all the women of color to go far, and you deserve to be here, and shout out to Sienna, and then go to Kevin and say... Oh, it's just gonna suck vote not Tanisha because she really needs it. Girl, shut up. She has been throwing the women of color under the bus since week one. Her. Week one. Since the fees turned on, Helena has been throwing Summer, Tanisha, and Betty under the bus. So the fact that she's trying to bullshit logic her way into, well, they targeted me first. They were after me first. Girl, you've been running their names, Jason and them since day one. Like, I don't understand. Like, I just feel like this is why I, like if you're gonna be a rat slaughter, own it. If you're going to throw all these bitches under the bus, own it. Don't give me the, well, I don't know, and I just want to be a good person, and it's a smart move. I don't want to think emotionally. Like, no, you are a passive-ass player. You clearly can't take any control. That's the thing. I compare her to Nicole Franzel. She's no Nicole Franzel because the bitch is not going to win. At least Nicole won. Her. Um, and with that being said, I'm giving Helena a 5.5. I feel like this is not a good move for her. I feel like she's losing a lot of control of the game. I feel like the game that she has to play, it seems like, 
is the is going away. That floater game cannot be played in this house after this week. So with that being said, her game is going to go down the drain. She doesn't. She's, she's losing her pieces. She doesn't have good relationships with anybody in that new alliance. Well, she does. She doesn't have the best barely, relationship barely. with people in that alliance. She doesn't have the best relationship with Gino. She's cool with JC Lynn, but JC Lynn is cooler with Jess. She's cool with Kevin, but Kevin don't care about nobody. Like, like she doesn't really have like how she needs to have. I think it needs to be a little bit more. If you're going to choose that side, you need to take control of that side. Exactly. What Kevin is doing is what Helena needs to be doing. Helena's not doing it. You're letting some vital pieces on the other side of the house go home. You should rather Moose go who you don't have than Tanisha Our relationship go, with who that you all. do have. Like it, it's, and I think Helena could, Helena could have been like, well, I'm not voting for Moose to stay because Moose don't even like me. It's over. The whole flip is dead. And I will say she got a day to do it. Because we are a day ahead. She's so, not going to, though. She's so, not. This is something she should, know she should be doing. She has to She still hasn't even fully decided if she's uh, voting for Tanisha. That mm -hmm. just show. I think, I feel like we saw it a little bit on, on the uh, Kyle mm -hmm. week with the Josh. Indecision. It's coming back. And I can't reward I can't reward it. I can't reward it anymore. And if the game keeps going forward, like you said, this house is not gonna work. The game play that she does is not gonna work in a house of size. After mm -hmm. Tanisha goes home, I can almost guarantee Herman, Moose, Summer, and Betty are no gonna want to work with her. Mm -hmm. She has Josh, but everybody else has Josh. She has Kevin, <laughs> but how how far but Kevin only got himself. Exactly. And Kevin's gonna beat your ass at the end. Let's be honest. Marty, you're not Marty's top priority. You're damn sure not Gino and Jason Lynn's top priority. You might be Jess. But Jess finna go home. Exactly. Oh. So it's like, where is your foundation? I think the best part about her game is that she did have connections on all, all sides of the house. All over the... Mm -hmm. if, if you're allowing Kevin to make these relationships and Josh to make these relationships, mm -hmm. then where are you going to be at? And she said oh, it Jason no. Lynn. Alina had a conversation with Kevin and she said, Kevin, are you sure we want to do this? Kevin was like, Sure. She was like, I just feel like if we do this, I'm going to be the one who's getting the, the the shorthand of the stick. Everyone's going to be mad at me. So you know it. And then she didn't do anything about it. She no, knows no. that people are going to be most mad at her. She's the most expected to keep Tanisha of the people not keeping Tanisha. And Kevin knows it too, which is why Kevin is Gucci with it. If Helena and me flip, bye Helena. Yep. He, knows like, he doesn't care. He, wants he doesn't chaos. care. And she should be, she should, like, for me to give her a six, that's why I didn't give her a six. For me to give her a six, she should have had that knot. Like, she, I feel like a six would have knew that, in my opinion. Yeah. No shade. Damn. So, Herman, I, my thing, Herman is freaking crazy, and we say this every week. Herman will be in the worst position ever, and then he'll help his position. The issue is, is that everyone thinks he's working with all the black people, so every everything now that he's doing to help his position is just it, it, it's only helping him in fake La La Land because they think that he's working with all the black people wholeheartedly, which isn't true. So if the house wasn't this way where they're assuming that people are working together, then Herman, I feel like would have done a lot of good work this week and a lot of the stuff he did could have helped. Unfortunately, that's not the case. So Herman kind of is going to be on the island alone because no one really wants to work with Herman. Gino, Gino does want to work with Herman. But I don't think Gino is, for example, Herman's pitch is me, you, Tanisha, and JC Lynn. If Gino is going to vote out Tanisha and not tell Herman, Herman's not going to work with one. The one person who might want to work with Herman is Gino, but Gino's turning his back on Herman already. So Herman's going to have to hop off of that wagon anyways. So the point is, at the end of this week, he's going to be on the island because he's not actually working with Summer and Betty. He's not actually working with Summer and Betty, and he's not actually working with Moose. So the best thing for his game is to be to get them all together with Josh, which he probably will do, but that's not what happened this week. This week, he did a good job to try to, you know, save himself and reposition himself with this new alliance that he's trying to form. But everybody in that alliance, or half that alliance, thinks that he's working with a whole other group of people, which he's not. So unfortunately, he didn't do any. He basically did nothing all week, um, according to what happened. So that sucks. He did win this veto and save himself. He probably would have went home if he didn't win this veto. So that's good. But dang, he's like not in a good position at all. He's in a booty hole position. I do think he has the chops to get out of that. I do think that it's possible that people like Gino might not want to send him home. But in a double eviction, once again, people are not going to be thinking. They're going to be like, Herman on the block. So he really needs to win HOH or it's over for him. 
So with that being said, I gotta give him. I gotta give her mine a three point five. I do. I just don't. It's not looking good for him. He's more of a threat on that side. He's one of the biggest threats. Yeah, and that's why. Because like the fluidity of this house is just throwing the rankings all off. So honestly, this week I'm not even. I need a little bit more solidification. The points I'm the points I'm giving is mainly based off of gameplay because mm-hmm. you can't even put in like longevity because it's double yeah. coming this week. Any people can go home next. Mm-hmm. So I am just gonna try to like base this week more on gameplay than anything. I think Herman. The second thing about Herman is that. Because that he because he was grouped with the rest of the black players, like Pharaoh mentioned, um, his game has been taped ever since. I mean, no one can fully on the other side, which is the white people. Let's be honest, Marty, Gino, Jason, Lynn, they can't fully take any of his proposition seriously because they believe that he is working with the rest of the black players. When mm-hmm. in reality, Summer just told this man she doesn't want to use veto on him this week. Summer said they should have been talking about how they don't trust this man forever. Jow was talking about how he doesn't trust this man. Mm-hmm. Betty was talking about how he doesn't trust this man. Moose was literally throwing all three of them under the bus. It's just, but because the White House guests seem to think every black person is working together. He, the good work he puts in, it never does anything. I think he's putting in eight type gameplay work, but because of the situation in this house, he <laughs> is lower because of that. And it sucks because I do think he's a good player, but like I said on my last on the last video, um, not every good Big Brother player is out here getting compared to people because of the color of their skin. Like I'm sorry, and and. and I, I mean, this stuff may offend some people, but at the end of the day, we cannot... I'm not going to sit up here and act like these people are not being targeted for the simple fact that they are Black. Um, Kyle started a rumor that the Black House is working together, and that has been a rumor since his HOH. The only reason why they are being targeted is because of the idea that all six of them are working together, which just is not true. They see them hanging out and think... Oh well, I guess they're just they're they're all together now. And da, 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 da. Jess made the comment, well, if they're gonna prioritize themselves over me, none of that was happening. They're not even able to play the game they want to play because they're being grouped with other people. So it does suck for Herman. I do think he deserves so much better. He deserves a different cast. He deserves non-racist people. I don't know. Um sadly, I do have to give Herman the five. Mainly because I do think he is, I think he's safer than most going into the double. I don't think Gino nominates him outright. Um, Gino hasn't even mentioned going after Herman since um, Herman has won veto. Mm-hmm. Um, um, the only people who really talk about like getting out Herman moving forward is Kevin and Helena, and that's mm-hmm. if they win. Uh, he has a lot of outs moving forward. I mean, if he wins the next HOH, you mm-hmm. know. He, he gets to prove to people, well, maybe uh, I am someone you can work with. Mm-hmm. I do think he has a few outs, but as long as the house keeps thinking that all the black people are working together, he's never going to be able to really spread his wings the way he really needs to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't even know who this next person is. Um, JC Lynn? What's that? Girl. Who's that? Um, <laughs> JC Lynn decided to wake up this week. She finally, you know, realized, oh, I might be playing a game, but the gameplay is just terrible. I mean, JC Lynn is only gonna get in a good position because of Gino. The difference is people actually want to work with Gino. JC Lynn is just an add on, they have no real game outside of. Gino, they have no real strategy outside of what Gino tells them. And how much does Gino actually know? Not much. So I'm gonna save one of the two for oh, I gave her a one last week. I'm gonna give her a one again. Um, <laughs> I will probably be giving her a one for the rest of the season. She doesn't really deserve more. Yeah, um, JC Lynn does little to nothing. One thing JC Lynn did do this week was ensure that Tanisha was going home. So that's something she was very like um, adamant about that when she was talking to Helena and Kevin. And she was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tanisha's going home because Gino didn't even think that that's what, you know, he was going to do. 
Um, so that is one time that Jason Lynn did do something. Um, Jason Lynn had a good relationship with two people in the house, and they won the last two HOHs. So maybe she's doing something right. No, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's giving two. Maybe. Mm. You can give it to her. I ain't giving a shit. You know what's it, you know what's crazy? JC Lynn is it should be in damn near the best spot in the house. And it just doesn't she isn't. Then like, she has no I, real game. She's she has no real game. She's so there she's, because she's white and they assume all the black players are working together. So people are forced to work with JC Lynn because mm-hmm. she's white and they feel like they have to stick together. And that's it. If so, JC Lynn was black, she'd probably be grouped with the black players too. She's fortunately for her, she's not black. Yeah, but she gets it too. Oh my God! So the Child. Oak Pharaoh, did we? Girl. Did we predict the season? We done predicted when we said white is right. What we do? And we said it loud and proud. Wow! It was us. It white was us. Power. Not this. <laughs> I'm gonna start on this. I'm gonna talk about this bitch. No, I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You talk about him. Um, I don't like Jess. I think Jess <laughs> is a spineless, um, very much weak, very much, very much white they them tears. Um, they definitely victimized themselves the entire week. It gave me very much Christmas vibes. I remember when Christmas nominated Bailey and Davon and got mad that they were mad about being nominated. Like, well, I should. Well, I feel bad because you're upset that I nominated you. That's what that's what this week is giving me. I heard apparently they wanted to quit after putting up Tanisha. Like, baby, you don't get no sympathy from me. You're weak. You're not gonna win. And that's that. It's a two. Um, I'll get into some of the like, I guess, strategy question mark. I'm so over these people. I'm so over these people. (laughs) So just, um, it was interesting because at the beginning of this week, just did have a decision. They could have went about this HOH differently and kind of played the middle how they had been playing. Um, And they could have strayed away from ending up having to nom Tynesha. They could have nommed Gino and Moose and backdoored her mom. They could have nommed Gino and her mom, backdoored Moose. They could have did something different, but they chose the route of, I'm going to choose, I'm going to create a side and solidify a side that had been starting and I'm going to stick with that. And I'm going to, you know, allow everybody else to be mad at me who isn't on that side because they felt like that the black people were prioritizing their um, their fake group over Jess, um, which wasn't real. So I don't know. Anyway, so they had a decision they could have made. And they chose the decision to make half the house mad at them, basically. And I don't think that was the smarter decision. And I feel like, I don't know, it was just interesting that that's what they chose. They have decent relationships, but I do feel like a lot of people are just using them a little bit. I do feel like Gino um, doesn't actually care about Jess based on the way that he moves throughout the house and what he says to other people. It doesn't really say, oh, I love Jess. I like Jess. I want to work with Jess. Um, her mom was like, um, oh, yeah, let's make this alliance. We can maybe add Jess. And Gino was like, oh, I mean, I like the four of us. Like, Gino don't care about them. Um, Marty has a relationship with them, but that's not his priority. Kevin don't care about nobody. Kevin literally said, um, yeah, I'm gonna get Jess out one of these days. Can't wait to get Jess out. So Kevin doesn't care about Jess, but Kevin damn near ran Jess and Tyra's HOH damn near. Um, Jess didn't even make the move that I felt like was the best for them. So Mm -hmm. with that being said, um, just social game is trash. Just damn near the target for anybody who's not in her new white alliance. Um, so Three? Yeah. Mm, I mean, o- overall, Jess just had very, 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 very terrible HOH. I mean, let's think about it. So in the size that they planted in their head, it's all the Black people, right? Mm-hmm. She has now turned on Betty, Tanisha, Summer, Moose, and Harmon. Five of the six people that she think of working together, they have actively turned against now. Mm-hmm. And on the side that they think that they're on, Helena and Kevin had a conversation today saying, oh, um, we're definitely going to have to throw Jess under the bus for this vote. Like, we're going to have to get them, you're going to have to get them targeted over us. Gino, like you said, don't want to include them in anything. Jason is just happy they stay safe for another week. And (laughs) Josh is annoyed. Like, this girl was the main (laughs) one keeping Josh safe last week. And Josh is like, well, 
You know what I mean? I mean, mm -hmm. just it's just. Uh, what you think of Josh? So Josh, I'm actually very disappointed in Josh this week. I think um, I made a critique a while back saying like, you know, I want to see like Josh has all this information. Is he going to be an active enough player to make something shake with the information? You know, make some moves, like really start coming out of his shell. Mm -hmm. He has shown that he cannot do that. I don't know if it is just the timidness or what, but he just does not seem to be able to dictate any strategy in the game. I mean, this man is aligned with everyone. He has all the information in the house, and he's not doing anything with it. He is not furthering his position. His, his the position is actually kind of declining a bit. Gino has talked about not trusting him this week. So is JC Lynn. Um, her, Jess is, qu not, is questioning him. Uh, it's just he's trying so hard to be in the middle, but when the 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 people are getting out of the game, it's going to be top eleven. Like you can't really hide in the middle anymore. A lot of players are, are kind of getting that, and it only it's interesting to see that only one. Kevin is seemingly a being able to do something about it. I do think Josh, he's letting the game get away from him. And it's sad. I think uh, what we saw from Josh week one is kind of just honest to the player Josh is. He was able to get into a good position because of his social connections. But clearly, as we're starting to see, he's not able to keep up with those. People want to work with Josh because they all feel comfortable with Josh. But Josh isn't 100% good at making people. He's not, he's not, he's not good at doing things with the information that he's getting. Just point blank, period. So I am going to bring him back down to the six. I do think he is one of the safe people in the house. But, I mean, what you doing with all that safety? You know, like, mm -hmm. Josh is the type of player that is, I think he could likely get to the end and probably still win. But it would just be based off social connections alone. Like, strategy is not there. He usually just tells people what they want to hear, and they eat it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um... I think Josh is not doing enough. I think Josh is starting to fall behind a little bit. But I will say, like, Josh still has almost all the information. Josh has more information than almost anyone. So that's good that he has the information, but he's not doing anything with that information. Josh just kind of sits on that information and just sits in the middle and just sits there. Um, Josh does want to win an HOH. I think Josh wants to make a move, but that's the thing. But we don't and, even know against who. Right. That's what I'm saying. Josh... I feel like Josh might win an HOH and fuck his game up like the last four HOHs did. Five. <laughs> so I don't know. Like, I don't have that much hope in what he might do. I also feel like he's he's like not invested enough in who's going home. These are these are important weeks. These weeks are important weeks. This is deciding who's gonna be in the jury. This is deciding who's gonna who you can work with in the future. Um, Moose staying over Tanisha is not good for Josh. Josh should definitely want Tanisha to stay over Moose because in the future, this if Moose win HOH, it's not guaranteed Moose won't do it because, mind you, they're not working together, actually. So I really do think it's a bad move, similar to Helena, but I think it's even more worse for Josh um, to not be wanting to save Tanisha right now. It's important, especially because... If the other side of the house, which Josh kind of knows, if the other side of the house thinks that they're all working together, then... You don't think you might be included in that, might be working together? It should be imperative for him to keep the people who are going to help him, especially at this point in the game. This is an important week, and he's letting Tynesha go home. I don't think that's good at all. I think that's really bad. And if he's going to make these bad decisions, that's where you're going to get. You're going to get passed up, baby. It's a five for me. Mm. Finally, we can talk about somebody who's actually doing something. Honestly. Jesus. <laughs> These people are crazy. God damn. Sorry, um, Kevin. Yeah. Um, oh, you can go back, Kevin. I'll start with Josh first. Sure. Um, I like Kevin. Okay, I don't like Kevin, but I do like Kevin. I think the reason that I'm less upset at Kevin than everybody else is because I think Kevin know they're not working together. I think Kevin is the only person who is aware of what the fuck is going on. I don't think Kevin actually thinks they're all working together. I think Kevin is aware that they're scattered over the place and is aware that this other side is dumb enough to believe it. Kevin is the main one controlling things. Kevin done made Jess want to target them. Kevin has made Jess want to do all these things. But I don't know why. <laughs> I don't necessarily understand the reasoning. But I will say this week has made Kevin the front runner of the game. This week has put Kevin in a good position. Kevin was smart enough to make sure Helena and Jess 
are going to get a lot of the fall for this. So even though Kevin is the main person who caused this to kind of happen, um, he's not getting any of the rap for it. Even like even after Helena or Jessica, Gino and JC Lynn are a are, are couple. So I think Kevin is just in the best position overall. Kevin has a good relationship with Josh, where he's like forming the strategic re relationship. Kevin has the best relationship with Jess. Kevin has the best relationship with Helena. Kevin has good relationships with Marty and Gino and um not JC Lynn, but who is that? Um and Kevin's not going to get the heat from the other side. And Kevin knows Moose is staying. So Kevin is now forming a strategic relationship with Moose. Kevin has done a lot of good work and he's in a good position. He's in a really good position. This new side that formed is Kevin is at the center of it because Kevin has centered himself. He's making Jess think that him and Marty and him and Gino and all of these people aren't cool. But Kevin has his solo conversations with these people himself. Kevin is sugar. Kevin is with his sugar grandmother. So I don't know. Like it's giving, this is just going to be the front runner of the season. And Hey, it is what it is. Um, I still, I don't know why he did it, but it, what he did put him in a good position. So maybe that's why, maybe he knew if I did this and I made everyone targeted all these other people and I was at the center of all the white people, then I could win the game. That's what you got to do to win the game. I guess, babe. Um, I will also say he wasn't the main one pushing this, narrative um he just benefited the most from this narrative because he yeah. knew how to pick up those pieces and run with it so i mean hey i'm gonna have to give kevin an eight baby mm. what's his first eight of the season eight i'm giving him an eight Definitely. i i do i do i like kevin on a game level you know i i realized a while ago that i have to do separate my game appreciation and then the personal appreciation I have for people. I do mm -hmm. think it's harder for me to separate with other players because I just don't see the logic in the gameplay. But with Kevin, mm -hmm. I see the logic. I think Kevin's a really smart player. Like, I don't think it's necessarily smart for any of the middle players for Moose to stay until they should go, honestly, because it does expose them a lot more than it would if they keep Moose. I think mm -hmm. it's very easy to sell. None of us trust Moose. Let's just vote Moose. For the middle players to be able to still play a middle Mm -hmm. Moose going is perfect. That's why I don't understand why Jess, Helena, and Kevin want this to happen the most. But mm -hmm. hey, we're here. But however, at least Kevin, he's going to make that connection with Moose. Now, Moose moving forward, Moose is probably not going to put him up. Even mm -hmm. if Moose stays with Summer, Betty, and Herman and Josh after this week, um, he's probably not going to put up Kevin because Kevin is one of the only people who came to him and told him, I want to keep him. I mean, you have mm -hmm. to realize, five people are keeping Moose and Jess, the HOA, is okay with it. Mm -hmm. And they're not even talking to Moose. Kevin's the only one doing so. Just mm -hmm. shows the level of gameplay in the house. Um, I do think he is becoming the front runner of the season very easily. And it, but but it's gonna be really tricky for him. I think he was able to set himself up well with the other side of the house, the Caucasian side of the house. Mm -hmm. However, by getting out Tanisha this week, he is gonna completely lose trust with Summer, Betty, Herman, and Moose. Uh, Herman already just don't like him. Mm -hmm. Um, that is three people. He's probably has the what I mean, you know, some of the people targeting um, him in the house, but yeah. it's like those are still unnecessary enemies that he didn't need. I do think his mm -hmm. his his need for chaos is gonna come back to bite him at some point. Mm -hmm. However, I do think. The house is so fluid. A player like Kevin at this point can just be chaotic all the way to the end. So mm -hmm. I'm going to give him a seven. Um, mm -hmm. Based on gameplay this week, I do think he has some of the best. He's definitely one of the most active players in the game, mm -hmm. um, as it opposed to the other middle players who really seem like they're probably going to be in the end game. Like, I do think Kevin, Helena, Josh could potentially be in the end game. I think his only issue moving forward is... His only issue moving forward is if one, because if, if, if some of them are able to turn on that, that competition winning ability and start winning out, then he's in, he's in a big problem. And mm -hmm. then also, too, I mean, he wants to go to the end with, like, Josh and Helena. I mean, is that the smartest? You know, mm -hmm. like, you take Josh, you're losing to Josh. You mm -hmm. probably beat Selena, but you have to beat Josh to mm -hmm. take Helena. So, I, I don't know, but we're not there yet. So, right now, it's a seven. All righty. Um, how do you feel about Marty? Um, I think Marty's a puppet. Um, he's definitely <laughs> Kevin's biggest tool. Marty just walks around the house being <clears throat> weird all day. 
I mean, like today, like like uh, yesterday we mentioned how I mean, not yesterday. Uh, we mentioned how uh, Jace Lynn decided to wake up, and one of JC Lynn's uh, new strategies is basically having all of the people on their side watch Summer, Betty, Tanisha, just watch them all day. So Marty has been on that duty for the most part. Um, sadly, he's a pretty active player. Um, so he is able to get into a lot of people's ears. I just don't think he has that much influence. I mean, <clears throat> uh, the only people who I think are really going to listen to him would be a Gino, uh, per se. I think Kevin has his own mind. Helena has his own mind. Um, for the most part, Kevin is just telling Marty to do shit and Marty just does it. Uh, he's very tunnel vision. Like for example, he's like, well, now I'm going after Summer because Summer crossed me. Whole time, Herman and Moose we're probably going to target you and go after you, but you want to go after Summer, who literally trusts you, one of the people who trust you the most in the house. I mean, his reads are terrible. He's one, also one of the main people who are pushing the Black House guests together when, like I said, he literally had a relationship with Herman. He had a relationship with Summer. He had a relationship with Tanisha, but he threw it away because he felt like they were all with each other and not with him. Why? I don't know. I mean, we all know, but I don't know. Um... I do think, sadly, he is one of the second people in the house, so I'm going to give him a five. Um, he, I mean, I mean, I feel like as the weeks go by, it's just really showing, like, gameplay-wise. A lot of these people are just terrible. Like, a lot of these people who are getting the higher scores tonight are not because of the work they put in at all. It is solely because of the position. And mm -hmm. let's be very clear, they did nothing to be in those positions. Like, let's just be honest. Yeah. Um, I do think Marty has puppet tendencies. Um, but Marty, I guess when Marty has an opinion, it, it gets it gets done, I guess. I don't know. Um, I will say Marty was one of the main people who wanted Tanisha to go. I think Tanisha going, no, because Moose don't like this man either. <sighs> who is Tanisha going good for? They, they, the, oh, it's, the issue is, is that they're basing it off the fact that she's at the forefront of a fake alliance. So they think it's great for all of them. They think they're cutting off the head of a snake. My, meanwhile, they're doing nothing. So yeah, it wasn't really Marty. Um, I agree with what you said about Marty. I do think Marty has like some game sense. Like Marty does have agency, which some people don't have, but his agency doesn't really. It's it's weird. It's kind of like he's just not really doing much. He's just saying things and it's like, okay, Marty. <laughs> some people believe it, some people don't, and then they move along. And it's like, okay, is that all? You, is that your game? That's the only thing about your game. Um, I do think Marty is smart um, in some ways. I do think Marty has some good positioning qualities, um, but that's it. I think Marty's in a good position, um, but I don't know. I just don't have promise. Like He hasn't shown me much of anything. Nothing has really changed since the beginning of his game. He hasn't improved. He hasn't done much more. He hasn't uh made something happen um in a big way he hasn't formed an alliance he isn't at the center of this new group that's being formed he has good relationships um with that side but that's just it i don't know but he is in a good position so i'm gonna give him a five two also that's it um moose is next moosey pool mm. um girl moose finna be gone not even. That's the crazy thing. Not even, but but even. It's weird because a lot of people were saying, oh, we're thinking about nominating maybe, maybe Moose and Summer and putting up Betty as the renom. And I do think that's a sticky situation for him if that happens. But there are some people who don't want to nom Moose. So that's good. Um, I think Moose is, he's nominated. Um, I don't think he's going to go home this week, but I guess there's technically a chance because he's on the block. And I do feel like it's going to be sticky for him moving forward because Moose doesn't have any allies. Betty and Summer don't even trust him. And Herman doesn't trust him. So the three people who he's allegedly working with aren't working with him at all. Yeah, they're literally going um, to vote him out. They're literally going to vote him out. The one good thing about Moose's game is that maybe Summer and Betty are going to be targeted before him and same with Herman. Um, But then what? I don't know. He doesn't have much of a path. He doesn't have many allies. People don't even like want to work with him. Jess doesn't like him. Josh doesn't like him, but Josh kind of should. Um, you know, these people don't want to work with him. These people don't like him. So he's in a really bad position and he's nominated. I don't think there's much he can do to even get out of this. Unfortunately, the, the, this position isn't necessarily his fault. I think him being like now, it's more so that he was grouped with the group of people that he 
was not in an alliance with anyways. So I just got to give him a 2.5 because I don't see much of his game. I don't see much. Hope. Yeah. What you think? Mm-hmm. And, and you know, it sucks for Moose because ever since Kyle basically ruined his game, um, he, he's been trying to well, he really hasn't been trying to, honestly, but uh, he, he really just cause ha- hasn't been able to get out of the position that he's in. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people do not trust him. Right now, he's staying because a bigger threat is next to him. How is Tanisha a bigger threat? Please don't ask me, but apparently Tanisha is a bigger threat than him. At least that's how she's viewed in the house. Um, I do think he's just a big walking target. I do think if he is on a block uh, any t- at any point moving forward, I do think he go. But hey, I said that before, and he not going home. So I gave him a three point five last week. I'm gonna give him a three point five this week. Um, he's nominated, but I think he is. He's definitely staying at this point. So you know, I can't really say too much about him. Um, the good thing about Moose staying for me is that I do think you know he'll still stay with the Summers and her mom. Like he'll work with them, hopefully, because at this point they have no choice. The, the 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 rest of the car like I'm just be honest. Look, I'm not gonna say all these goddamn names. The white people linked up and they brought Helena. They see the black people and Moose working together. So moving forward, if the black people and Moose don't work together, they're just gonna get taken out one by one. Mm-hmm. Point blank period. That's at least what the season seems to be setting up to be. Mm-hmm. So Moose staying over Tanisha seems to be good because Moose will be able to win competitions. Tanisha haven't been proven that she can win. So Mm-hmm. Um. Next is summer. I don't want to do this one. Oh, sorry. Summer is my girl. I just want to say that summer has done. Mind you, last week our number one player was summer. I don't think summer has played bad this week. So according to history, she should still be up there. Um. I think summer has gotten i think the the worst the the worst end of the stick in this situation because summer hasn't done bad work at all i feel i feel like summer has ha- had a good relationship with marty summer had a good relationship with gino which she did let's slip a little bit but that's kind of jealous it's weird um summer had good relationships with jess had good relationships with kevin had good relationships with helena had alliance with helena had alliance with kevin had alliance with jess summer did everything that she needed to do to be in a good position and she's not except in a good be position. white except be white and she's not in a good position because she's not white and that's very very unfortunate and it sucks but she's just not in a good position anymore people are thinking about nominating her no one necessary well people do want to target her now no one i don't think summer will go next but that's it that's all i can say is that i don't think she'd go next i could be wrong my thoughts could be wrong easily and she can go right after that so I, I, I have hope for Summer, and I think Summer is a good player. Summer is the main person who is aware that, like, right when Tanisha got nominated, Summer was like, mm, Tanisha's probably going home. Um, so I do think Summer, within these next couple of days, is going to do some work to try to position herself better. So that's hopeful, but she was really not in a good position at all. And it's not her fault, but she's not. So I just got to go based off what's happening, which is that she's not. I don't think she's played this week bad. What she had to do was try to get Tanisha to not be on, block, on the block, and she did that. It was risky to throw out names, but it's not like she threw out Helena's name first. She threw out the names that she thought Jess would be willing to nominate, which is Gino, who just nominated them. I don't think Summer did a lot of bad things this week, Things this week, but Summer didn't cultivate her relationship with Gino as much as she should have, and that's kind of making him feel a little bit icky about her. Summer mm-hmm. did say she wasn't going to use the beat on her mind. That's gonna, all of these things sound petty, but these things are messing up her game, so these are the things that we have to talk about. I do think Summer's still a very capable player and that Summer can do some things, um, and I kind of feel like Summer might might be safe, but it's, it's starting to look worse and worse as damn as we speak. So I'm gonna have to give Summer a four point five. <sighs> Not the point five. It ain't gonna be a four. I, just, I ain't I going too damn. I just hate this because it's like Summer was doing so well, and I think this could make it seem like I, this could make it seem like oh, which is obvious, uh, maybe a fluke or something like that. But I don't think that's the case. Like Pharaoh said, Summer did a lot of things right this week. I think what Summer is experiencing, what honestly a lot of Black women experience in the Big Brother house, um, you sort of have to always be on. If you're not always on, if you're not always on top of your relationships, you're not always on top of everything that's going on, 
the game can very quickly slip from under you. Black women aren't really able to make too many mistakes when it comes to Big Brother. If they start, you know, becoming lean on a certain relationship, it's, well, well we're not working with her no more. Uh, I think Summer, like, she spoke about this week and her mental health was affecting her. She felt a little bit depressed. So she did stop socializing as much. And then it's almost instantly everybody wanted to tell her. Gina was done with her. Her mom was done with her. Uh, uh, it, Kevin and Helena are done with her now. Everyone who literally just a week ago was saying how much they like her, they're not going to put her up, they trust her, are now talking about nominating her and putting her up. It, it, it's just, I think, uh, I, it, it's just so random almost. And it does suck because her, like many of the other PLC players in the house, are being affected because they are being unfairly grouped to each other as a side. Um, Gino, who Summer has been cultivating a relationship with since the beginning, can't doesn't feel like he can work with her because he assumes that she's working with other black people. Jess, who fell, who who also had a good relationship with Summer, feels like they can't work with them moving forward because she just turned against a black person and she's not with all the black people. It, it, it's just honestly, it's not a fair position that she's being put into because. Summer is someone who's put in the work with, with, with Jess and Helena and Kevin and 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 uh Gina Marty. and Marty and all of these people literally everybody seeing her on a side that literally does not exist. And I do want to make one thing clear that it's not the fact that the black house guests are being targeted, that I'm upset. I'm upset because the reason why they're being targeted is the notion that they're working together. Please hear me when I say, if all six black people working together in a named alliance and they were actively coming after everyone in that house, you better believe I will be rooting for all of them to target that black alliance because that's just the game. It, but that's not the literal game. They're not working together. I don't know. It, like, it's just so crazy how much I have to stress that. They are not working together. You may see them talk. You may see them laugh. You may see them kicking each other's face. But... Everyone this season was equal opportunity to align with any of them. Her mom loves Gino. Summer loves Gino and Marty. Uh, 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 Josh has a relationship with Teddy and Betty and Helena. And then they even, and sometimes they even look at Josh. Is Josh with them? Why? Because he's black? It's like all of these players are, are not able to fully even connect because they're just being grouped with people they're not even loyal to. Summer, like like I said, Summer literally told her mom this when she wasn't using video on him. They were all they're all gonna evict Moose. It's just uh, uh, it makes my head hurt. I am gonna give Summer a five. I think the positive thing about Summer is that she just have a very natural game sense. I do think she'll be able to bounce back. My fear is that there's a double coming up. Um, that's why I, the points. If you know, I give a lot of fives because honestly, I don't know where we're gonna go past this. I mean. I can say, oh, I think she's going to bounce back. Boom, she's going to double just like that. You know what I mean? Gino, we're saying it's a good play. Well, Betty can win, put up Gino and Marty, and then boom, Gino's out. You don't know with some of these people. And I do think Summer, as long as she can get past this double, hopefully someone on her side of the house wins HOH. She could be in a good position, but we just have to see. Uh, I do think she has potential to stay. Tanisha being nominated and going out could help her a lot. She will no longer probably be seen as a duo. Her mom has done great work in making them seem not together because he's been throwing her under the bus all damn week. Josh is not necessarily too seen as tied to Summer. Because they view Tanisha as someone who connected that side, I do think Summer could become a free agent of sorts because her and Betty are close, but her and Betty are not close to where they're going to assume that her and, her and Betty are just as though she was Tanisha. Now, if they do, I'm not gonna get into that. This is gonna be a problem if they do. But <laughs> I do think she can. I do she she can um, bounce back. Um, she's gonna win this next situation anyway, so I, I might as well give her a seven. But I have to settle at the five. <laughs> five. Um, and Tynesha, how do you feel about Tynesha? And like I mean, I, I feel like I just keep repeating my damn self. Tynesha's position <laughs> is because she has gotten grouped with all of the Black... I mean, think about it. The week before, she was in some power trail with her mom and Moose, and now she's the head of a side that's keeping them together. Tynesha ain't did shit. This, this was Tynesha Day since being renominated. She making breakfast. She outside Ted, and she keep in with Summer and Tynesha. Tynesha, Tynesha literally been outside Tannen all day, talking to the people who keeping her. But for some reason, Kevin Hill and them see her as 
this strategic mastermind who has everyone connected and da 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 It just doesn't make any sense. I do. I will say. I will say her more than other players. She didn't help this narrative. Uh, she doesn't really talk to people that much. When she does, she doesn't do a good job of making people feel comfortable with her. Um, so that along with being grouped with the Black House guests really, really did hurt her. She is going home this week, and it sucks because I just love her so much. But Tanisha, I'm gonna have a give. I'm gonna. I'm... My sister going home. <laughs> I gotta give Tanisha a three. I gotta give Tanisha the three. She's going home. She's going home. She is going home. Point blank yeah. period. That could change in the next few days. I mean, like I said, today's Tuesday. We have Wednesday and we have Thursday. Things could change. And if you know things change, then next week we'll be putting her higher. But I mean, hell, at this point, even if she does stay a double coming, and if one of them niggas wins, she's going home again. So it, I mean <sighs> um, it's just yeah. Tanisha didn't do anything to put herself in this position necessarily. Tanisha did have an alliance with Jess, and not only did she have it, she was nurturing that alliance at the beginning of the, this entire week. Tanisha and Summer and Betty have been talking to Jess about, oh, let's add Josh to the alliance, and this is a good alliance, and they they have been nurturing it the way that they should be. Um, so, I mean, I don't think Tanisha did anything necessarily wrong when it comes to what she should be doing. I will say Tanisha doesn't have the best connections, especially on the like other side of the house. Um, so that sucks, but it's like, um, also Tanisha shouldn't be going home this early either. Um, a large part of the reason that Tanisha is going home is because they think Tanisha is in the head of an, because of something that's wrong, which essentially is bad gameplay. And if somebody going home because of someone else's ga bad gameplay, then that ain't nothing too bad for me. You know, I don't feel like Tanisha has done things bad to get her in this position. I don't think Tanisha has, has, they think Tanisha is just the best player ever and she's misting these people and then she's the glue to the other side and there's a whole other side and they're all black and she's the glue to it and oh my God, <clears throat> that's not happening. Tanisha is eating her food. Tanisha, I do believe that Tanisha wanted to just, you know, kind of lay low. I think that's why Tanisha, she's like, let me not be too social because I kind of want to lay. Like Tanisha hasn't done anything to be this big target. Mm -hmm. She's going home, <clears throat> so I gotta be a three. It, it it really just it really just sucks because I do feel like this situation is it, taking players who could overall be really really good, and uh, uh, you're taking players who could overall be really really good, and you're putting them in really really bad situations. I mean, when you like, for example, like Tanisha can't fully cultivate a relationship with Jess or Helena or Kevin because in the back of their hair they're always going to think oh she's working with all the black people and they're op she's obviously more loyal to Betty and so obviously more loyal to Summer but it's like is, is she really or is that just an assumption is mm. she really working with Moose Herman who she literally been saying she doesn't trust for weeks or is that just an assumption like they see her as someone who has potentially five people set under her when really she only has two it's just it, it's a position that she literally is not in um, so I put the people in order, best player to worst. Congratulations, Kevin. You are now the best player. Kevin has been in the top, what, like four for the last, for like damn near every week or for the last three weeks at least. So that's good for Kevin. Helena has been number two and will always be number two. Like I said last week, that bitch is getting second. Congratulations. She's definitely playing for second. Playing for second. And that's why she's second. Um, she's been second the last three fucking rounds. You will always be the second best. You will never be the best bitch. Anyways. Kevin is first. Summer's fall from Grace. Mind you, Helena is second place with a five. 5.7. 5. Like, yeah. mm, the girls that are going shows, low. That just shows that this week was all over the place. Like I said, I gave a lot of people a fives because there's a double coming up. I think there's a double coming up and mm -hmm. there's another HOA to the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Nothing, still, nothing is too solidified. I do think mm -hmm. there is a current projector trajectory. Mm -hmm. So, for example, because Jess did what they did, most likely any person who isn't Black um, is going to nominate a Black person mm -hmm. and likely get them out. Mm -hmm. However, I mean, the next two HOHs go to Black house guests. Then what? You know, do Kevin and Helena flip mm -hmm. back? Does Gino slip with them now? Does mm -hmm. Jess... You know, it's a lot of things that can change yeah. within the next two HOHs. So, we kind of just have to see. Yeah. After that, we have Josh. Josh is the highest black person. He's three. He was three last week too. He's probably gonna get third. It's giving we're, we're it's giving we're predicting the season. Let's get into it. Um, 
And At this, if I do have to predict the winner, I would probably say right now Kevin or Josh. Me too. I would say the same thing. Kevin or Josh right now. Um, and then we just go down. I'm not going to name everybody, goddamn. Um, but at the bottom, you know, look at them. Look at the two at the lo- look at two lowest fucking losers. They're gonna lose. This thing. They're in better positions than three above them, but they're still gonna lose before them. They're gonna lose. They're not good players. They're not good players. Not anyway, oh, well, anyways, um, let's talk about the what's it called? Let's talk about the damn draft real quick. Oh, wrong one. Not so hard. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so. Girl, fuck these people. So Tanisha is mine. I'm losing Tanisha. Um, I'm gonna have Marty. He's not gonna win. Josh might win. JC Lynn damn sure not winning. Jess is going home, and Helena's gonna get second. Lee has all the black people, so he's damn sure finna lose. Yeah. The only options are Gino and Kevin. Gino, well, that's a good option. Yeah, yeah, you got Gino. you got good white people. Yeah, you got sadly. good white people. Honestly, just cancel the whole season. If Summer is not going to be well, at the top running the thing, I don't care no more. I agree. I agree. And if she goes um, home, Pharaoh will be hosting this podcast by herself. I'm just letting you know right now. She's not going anywhere. <laughs> Please help. She's not going anywhere. Um. Okay. Let's real quick discuss, like the 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 what's it called? This this double this fake double thing just real quick like okay julie said no Ooh, Arisa, my, my apologies Arisa yeah, said right. yeah Arisa said um two people will be going home but this isn't your typical double eviction there was a double eviction sign behind her and that was basically what, what she said so i don't know what that means because they are saying Hamza is saying, oh, it's not going to be a returnee. So we're mm-hmm. thinking, oh, it's not going to be a fake double because usually if it's a fake double, then people are going to go home and then they're going to come back. But he's saying that's not what it is. So it's like, what do you mean it's going to be a double but not any other double? I don't know what they could do, but that's very, very interesting. If it is a double, a black person is probably going home because they're Stop. in that position. No, it's true. It is true. But but I will say, I mean, Josh has come second in comps. If Josh win HOH, I don't think Josh is gonna nom um, Betty and and Summer. I like, do just think I, I think I think and that's the thing. Think about it. Think about it. Last time a blind side happened, some of the minority side won. It was Gina. <laughs> so this time, you know, you know, most likely it's gonna be a mental comp. Betty has performed well in mental. Mm-hmm. Josh has performed well in mental. Gino Summer has performed well in. Oh fuck, he can compete. <laughs> um, so we really just but some have been throwing. Play. Some have been throwing. Some has been throwing. So we gonna have to see. But it's interesting that she mentioned that it was gonna be like a fake, or she didn't say fake. She that didn't say it's fake. gonna be a, she just a said different. We'll be leaving, and it will be not your normal double vision. So. Not your normal. I don't know what she did about that, but girl, let's just, let's uh, just get over it. I don't care. Anyways, this was a sad podcast. Um, send us flowers or some shit because yeah. that was sad. Shit, subscribe, follow us, <laughs> follow us at T Reality Kingdom on Instagram and on Twitter or and whatever. Ho- and hopefully, our next video. Oh, two people gonna be out by the time our next video. Mm-hmm. It's going. Ooh. It's gonna be a whole, and then the third person's gonna be leaving. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. So yeah, by the time I third video, hopefully we'll be happier. Hopefully, someone will be H O H, and that bitch Jess will be already out or leaving. Ciao. Yeah. Her. All right, we'll talk to y'all next week on Wednesday. <laughs>